Citizen Power by Mike Gravel. Introduction. When I decided to run for president, I decided to reissue Citizen Power. My initial hope was that it would be a second edition. Upon rereading it, however, two things stood out. One, the total disappointment upon realizing that the problems I defined 37 years ago had grown considerably worse. And two, my hopes of having to do very little rewriting were dashed by the fact that some of my views had matured and changed, requiring new and different solutions to the problems I thought I had figured out. The entire economic section has been left out because I cannot begin to do justice in the amount of time I have available. Nevertheless, I have some unusual programs I hope to undertake when I become president. I added a chapter on the drug war, which of course started with Richard Nixon just about the time I was writing Citizen Power. The war on drugs occasioned the whole debacle of prison expansion, and I felt compelled to address both of these serious problems, which seemed to scare other progressive candidates. In the chapter on taxation that I wrote 37 years ago, I recognized the corruption of the income tax and advocated a single tax. However, the work that has been done on the fair tax was superior to what I had done more than three decades earlier. I therefore found it easy to support the fair tax with this progressive rebate. Of course, with our present fiscal gap, the fair tax now becomes the only possible solution. My health care proposal probably represents the most substantial change. At the time, I naively assumed that a total government program could meet our requirements. As a result of my personal experiences with government programs and the innate abuse of government power, I departed from what I would call not a single payer, but a single source solution. That's why I amalgamated a program from two sources that meld together the checks and balances involving all the stakeholders in the healthcare field. The warfare state that I defined as a result of the Vietnam War has been expanded to include the Iraq War, but mostly to address the military-industrial complex, the existence of which mandates the repetition of wars periodically. Otherwise, there are no profits to be made by the industrial part of the partnership, and no promotions within the military arm. Probably the most discouraging chapter is the one on secrecy. Thirty-six years ago, I had just released the Pentagon Papers, and my case was before the Supreme Court. I was unsure of the outcome. Nevertheless, I was optimistic, which characterizes my whole approach to the original citizen power. Bear in mind, I was at the beginning of my Senate career and had great confidence that changes could be brought about within representative government. It was only at the end of my career when I left office that I was totally discouraged over the inability of representative government to address the problems that face us all. The secrecy issue was terrible under Richard Nixon, and has only become worse in succeeding Democratic and Republican administrations. The chapter on global governance articulates a view I have had since I was in my teens when I read The Anatomy of Peace by Emery Reeve. In it, he stated that until there is some form of global governance, mankind will never enjoy peace or a fair distribution of the planet's resources. As a result of my experiences and studies on global governance, I have now written a specific plan that defines the kind of global governance that would work fairly for everyone. It is a restructured United Nations that would require little change in the UN Charter, which is a magnificent document. What will facilitate this change is essentially the subject of Chapter 2, which I view as the most important contribution of this book, and I hope the most important contribution of my life as a public servant. The creation of a legislative proposal, the National Initiative for Democracy, is nothing less than an effort to bring about a fundamental change in the paradigm of human governance. Certainly it is not the most modest undertaking, but in essence a very simple one, and that is that human beings with rational will are more than capable to govern themselves. They merely need a structure to do it in a common sense fashion. I apologize for the many shortcomings that you will find in this book. I do not consider myself a scholar, but I do consider myself very much of a knowledge chunky, and I respect wisdom, which I do not think is based on education alone, but on life's experiences. My writing is self-taught. The acquisition of knowledge for me is a thrilling experience that I have sought all my life and have chosen to share through a career of public service and now through a modest literary effort. I hope that this book strikes a chord of interest and becomes a catalyst for thought and discussion. Mike Gravel, December 7, 2007.